Hi, this is Steve Mathers from Nature Spot. In this short video, I'm going to focus on recent developments in the dragonflies and damselflies of Vice County 55, which is Leicestershire and Rutland. And by recent, I suppose I mean the last five or 10 years or so. So I'd like to focus our attention on seven of the 25 or so dragons and damsels currently present in BC 55. Some have seen significant expansion of their distribution, whilst conversely, some may be under threat and in decline. Still others may have been overlooked due to the difficulty of their identification, and some are restricted and rare with only a few records and their distribution isn't really well known. Although one thing that never ceases to amaze recorders is the speed with which these, fragile, these seemingly fragile insects can expand their distribution into uh, suitable habitats. So let's start with the scarce chaser. Up to 2015, there've been a few sightings around Rutland Water, and it was a known in adjacent parts of Northamptonshire. Then in 2016, there was a chance find of a pair with evidence of mating at the other end of the Vice County, north of Kegworth on the River Saw. This species seems to operate on a two year cycle for the larvae to mature. So despite searching in 2017, none were recorded at this location. And then in 2018, as many as a dozen or so individuals were observed. Following the pattern, again, none were recorded in 2019. So we now wait with bated breath for suitable flying weather and hopefully new sightings of this pioneer colony uh, in the next few months. May and June are the main flight season for the scarce chaser. And the female is fairly easy to identify with a central black stripe along the abdomen. But the male can be confused with the male black tail skimmer. Although the chaser has black patches at the base of the hind wings, and it looks more compact or squat in profile as this slide shows. The common hawker is rarely recorded in VC55, perhaps as it is hard to distinguish from other hawkers. The yellow costa, the leading edge of the wings, is the most apparent diagnostic criteria. And ideally, a good photograph is needed to clinch this. It flies in July to September and likes acidic heathland ponds and bogs. And these are in short supply in VC55. But there is some potential in the west of the county, um, with several recent sightings of the common hawker at Charmwood Lodge, although occasionally individuals are recorded straying more widely. The black data has a similar flight season and favours similar environments to the common hawker. There are a few records, again from the west of the county, but not in the last five years. The identification of female and immature darters is often difficult. So the best hope of establishing the presence of this species is to find an unmistakable mature male like the one shown here, with his striking black and yellow colors. The beautiful demoiselle is rare and quite similar to the widespread banded demoiselle that we have in BC 55. And care is needed to distinguish these two species. And so in the field, all demoiselles should be checked out. This slide compares the two species. So in terms of searching for beautiful, the rare, beautiful demoiselles, 
on their own or amongst a group of banded demoiselles, look for the all blue wings of the beautiful male and the all brown wings of the beautiful female. Those with all green wings are female banded demoiselles and they generally have a white terra stigma which is quite prominent. And again, please take photographs of anything you see in order to establish the sightings and for reference. The small red-eyed damselfly has expanded into the area in the past 10 years or so. It's often found in association with its big brother, the red-eyed damselfly. The size difference is quite obvious when seen together. And although the thoracic pattern may be helpful to distinguish the two, it is the blue lower half of the abdominal segment eight on males that is the best single diagnostic criteria for the small red-eyed damselfly. In terms of habitat, the red-eye prefer perching on lily pads, whereas the small red-eye much prefers algal mats. And again, photographs can usually support a record and help prove the ID. The willow emerald damselfly arrived in Suffolk from the continent in 2009. And 10 years later, its rapid spread has now reached VC 55. 2019 saw them first recorded at Ibrook and then at Watermead Country Park just north of Leicester. It is possible that they may have been present for a year or two though and not detected. They fly late in the season and they like willows overhanging slow moving or still water. And given their track record of expansion, they are likely to spread to all suitable habitats in the county in the next year or two. The orange pterostigma, the very long abdomen and their late flight season helps distinguish them from the other British emerald damselflies. The white-legged damselfly is one of a group of damselflies called feather legs. It is the only British example of this group. And apart from the feathered legs, the thoracic pattern is also quite diagnostic. It flies mid-season, June to July. There has been some concern expressed about its status in recent years, so please record them wherever you find them and with a note of the numbers that you've seen. Finally, please send us all your dragon and damselfly records from Leicestershire and Rutland to Nature Spot at www.naturespot.org.uk. If possible, include photos, ideally both an orthogonal and a lateral view to see all the key features that are generally needed for identification. And thank you again for your interest in these amazing insects.